What does the Bible say in the book of Revelation chapter 20? Well, it's a positive point, but the, express it negatively. It says there's going to come a time when God will kill death. Tell us about it, Neil. <laughs> yeah, look. And put that in the positive. That sounds shocking, doesn't it? Does it does sound rather shocking. <laughs> I, I guess many people live yeah. with the fear of death, don't they? Yeah. I yeah. mean, you know, it's, it's, it's there. I mean, intellectually, we can think about death. I mean, Hebrews mm. 2 and verse 14 actually says, you know, that Jesus came to rescue us from the fear of dying. Okay. And, you know, that, that, not the pain, not the pain, but the okay. fear of dying. And, okay. and so thinking about that, you know, we've been we can be slaves to that emotionally. It can rob us of joy of living intellectually. Okay. We can just think God's the monster. Yeah. Um, you know, all sorts of things come out of that. But the reality is that that God is actually going to bring an end to all of that. And then, of course, in the Middle Ages, and not just the Christian church all around the entire world, oh, different profiteered faiths. from it. Yeah, yeah. You've got yeah. the extremists who are so afraid of dying a certain way. They go and do extreme acts. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And, so, so these and even belief today, systems just aren't in their brains, they matter. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right, they are. <laughs> even today, you know, people can profiteer yeah. from the death and misfortune of others. Yeah, okay. There are millions stuck in different social castes. Yep. Thinking they can't shift because they're stuck from a prior life or something, isn't it? Yeah, all of yeah. that. And yeah. so, you know, we can really become prisoners okay. to the, the ideologies that people hang on to. And I think that's where the truth of Scripture really comes in and cuts through all of that and just gives us the, the, the good oil. Yeah. You know, and this Christmas, I just wonder, as the holidays come and you've got a bit of spare time afterwards, maybe it's a good idea to start thinking about who's injected into your belief system. <laughs> and, uh, what beliefs do you, would you like to have? Well, moving on to the next point here uh, about hellfire. You can't run away from hellfire, can you, Ben? I mean, the Bible talks about hellfire. The Bible does. The Bible says that this yeah. earth is destined for hellfire. It uses this word hell. Okay. And it says that there's going to be this huge nuclear like fire that will wrap the whole earth, like you said, one flash in your rash. And it sounds pretty frightening. And oh, of course, it does. <laughs> it sounds R rated. It's, it is. It, it's pretty scary. And yet, somehow, over over time, yeah. the church has in fact made it even worse, if that's possible, with more than just this hellfire that encompasses the earth, hellfire that encompasses the earth, and yet that goes on and on, say for billions and trillions, in fact, eternity, years. And so this idea, whether it's come in through uh, politics or power or for whatever motivation, it's crept into the church. Yeah. And even though it might not really be exactly what the Bible says, hell really is. Yep, yep, yep. But some people say, I mean, think about it. The Bible does talk about it, Neil, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. And, and look, you know, it, it's really interesting. I mean, in that video clip you had of Sodom and Gomorrah, you saw the strated layer there yeah. of the sulfur. And the Bible describes that as the, the, the fires of that will burn forever. Or what about this one in Isaiah 34? Okay. The judgment on Eden will never end. The smoke of its burning will rise forever. The land will lie deserted and so on. In fact, mm -hmm. it will be haunted by the horned owl, the hawk, the screech of the raven and so on. So mm -hmm. hang on. How can you have a fire burning forever and the birds actually yeah. inhabiting it? it? Oh, OK. Yep. okay. It, you yep. can't put both of those together. Uh -huh. Obviously, it's talking yeah. about the fire burning up the fuel and it's forever gone. Mm. And so think of it in a, in a different sense. Think about the fire having eternal consequences, if you like. Mm. And once it's burnt up, the fuel's gone, that's it. And then it can become a home for birds mm -hmm. and so on. OK. Now, of course, the, the, the point at the end of the day is that God can rescue you from absolutely anything, including a final fire, isn't it, Ben? That's right. The um, chapters that we've been looking at through Revelation are all about God rescuing us from anything. And we see the big picture of the Bible filling us with all sorts of stories about God rescuing us from all sorts of catastrophes. Let's just do a quick review of where we've been in Revelation. Um, we've been looking at Revelation 16, and that promises that God will rec rescue us from all sorts of physical disaster, like even like the seven last plagues. Mm -hmm. Then Revelation 17, we saw that God will rescue us from false ideas. And that's what we're talking about today. Similar. Yeah. And um, one day the Bible says there will be a judgment for those who promote those false ideas. Then in Revelation 18, we see that God can rescue his people even from the collapse of a civilization. And so this is from economic disaster. So that's good news for all of us. Mm. Then in Revelation 19, we see that it's getting more and more incredible. God can rescue us even from the end of the world. Mm. And Revelation 20, we see today that God can even rescue us from death. And so this is just crescendoing. God is trying to scream out to you and me, to the author of the book, that God is there for us. He wants to rescue us. We can trust in him. He's not going to let us down. And next week's the crescendo, of course. Well, the ultimate 
uh, is what happens afterwards. He's doing all this rescuing. Where to then? Are we going from the frying pan into the fire? <laughs> yeah, well, that's a good question. Is it, are we being rescued for something worse? Well, the Bible says that we've got this incredible yeah. Christmas present of all Christmas presents, and that's heaven waiting for us. Okay. And so we're looking forward to that that's next week. week. Yep. It's an amazing Christmas special. There's so many items. It's absolutely magnificent and amazing. You're really going to be watching it.